Good morning. Oh, we could do better than that, y'all. Good morning. That's wonderful. It's so wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. If you're visiting here, we just want to say welcome. There is freedom in this place to worship the Lord God Almighty. And we are just celebrating the resurrected King this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's stand on up. And I'm going to pray for us. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would have your way in this place. We acknowledge your beautiful, wonderful presence. Would you touch our hearts, Father? Would you help us to look to you, fix our eyes on you, King Jesus, that you would be the founder and the finisher of our faith. We love you, O God, and we bless your holy name. And let God's people say amen. 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 One day. And then one day. Come 
has won a victory. It's a victory song.
stone You lived and died Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground ah, You took the fall Oh yeah And thought of me Yeah Papa Sing it out. 
the sound that saved the rest like me. Sing amazing grace. Because of the grace that you and I can approach the throne of grace boldly. I, uh, this time I just want to ask you a couple of questions. And my, my first question is this How many of you need something from God today? Come on. Yeah. See, we're a needy people. What I want to do now is this. I want to give you an opportunity to receive prayer. And if you need prayer today, doesn't matter what it is, God, God's our healer. God's our provider. Amen. He's our source, friends. And whatever you have need of today, He is the answer. You say, Pastor, I have a need today. I want to see your hand. Come on. Come on. Well, would you stand up now? Come on, stand up. Come down front and get.
get prayed for today. Come on down here. Nobody bites yet.
habit of just always telling God what our problems are. Nothing wrong with that. But you know, I just want to encourage you this morning. Sometimes just tell your problems who you serve. Is that alright? Alright, we pass. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let's let my Jesus change your life. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Who can Amen. wipe away the tears? Who can wipe away the tears? Broken dreams and wasted years. Till the past will disappear. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And all the wrong turns that you would. out for your good, yeah, let me tell you about my Jesus, yeah, he makes a way where there ain't no way, come on, rises up from the empty grave, ain't no sinner that he can't save, let me tell you about my Jesus, his love is strong and his grace is free, and the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Tell you about my Jesus and let my Jesus let my Jesus change your life. Say, hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Who will take my cross to Calvary? Pay the price for all my guilty. Who will care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Alright, just the voices. All right, one, two, three, and sing. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about his love is strong. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong. His love is strong and his grace is true. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus, let my Jesus change your life. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 
good to be in God's house with you today. Here's what I want you to do before you're seated. All of you are almost seated. Would you, would you introduce yourself to somebody you don't know this morning? Here's why I say that. Hold on, hold on. Here's why I say it. Because we're all trying to go to the same place and spend eternity together. But we have a hard time talking to each other right here. And I'm a shy person. Y'all don't know that. I, I've got a lot of strikes against me. I'm an introverted. I'm shy. I'm a germaphobe, and if I can get over it, so can you. <laughs> and y'all don't believe any of that, do you? <laughs> get out and greet somebody today. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my His love is strong. His love is strong, and his grace is free. And the good news is, I know that he let me tell you about my He Jesus. makes a way. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sin that he can't save. Let me tell you about my His love is strong. His love is strong and his grace is deep. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my He Jesus. makes a way. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my his love is strong. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is, I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my and Jesus. And let my Jesus, let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen, amen. Sing hallelujah, 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 amen, amen. Bless the Lord. Hey, some of y'all need to get somewhere and sit down. I said a couple of people, not everybody. It's good to see you in God's house today. It's Resurrection Sunday. I want to tell those of you that are visiting with us today, thank you so much for being our guest. I want to tell you, welcome home. I want you to make yourself at home. Just don't take your shoes off yet. We're glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you're here. I want to tell you this, I have some hopes for you. I hope that people have been kind to you. I hope that you feel welcome here. I do. I hope that you receive something from God's Word today that you can and will apply to your life. And I hope that you'll come back and see us. I do. Would you give this worship team a hand? Today? Next Sunday after the second service, I want to ask you to come and celebrate with us those who are being baptized and giving their life to the Lord. You know, they've given their life to Christ and now they're honoring God and what he commanded us to do. Jesus said we need to be baptized, so Come and celebrate that with us. It's going to be a joyous, momentous occasion. And always get excited at baptisms. But we're glad you're here. Are you glad you're here? Yeah. For those of you who don't know, the air conditioner went out about three and a half, well, maybe four weeks ago, but it's been limping along for about six months. And uh, God has been so faithful. Uh, in three weeks, we raised the money to put in the new air conditionings and our air conditioners, and I am so thankful. See, what y'all don't know, y'all think it's hot out here. You ought to be up here with these lights shining on you. 
And I have too much insulation already. <laughs> well, there's a story in the Bible in John chapter 11 where it talks about a man and how that life is slipping away from him. And there are two sisters, Mary and Martha. And they have a brother named Lazarus, and Lazarus was on his deathbed. And he was so sick that he was about to die. Has anybody in here ever been so sick you feel like you wanted to die? Y'all are lying. Nobody raised their hands. <laughs> My goodness gracious. And I was so sick, I was about to die. And some people you think, well, it's a shame you didn't. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Oh, Lord, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually embarrassed. I said that. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> oh, my filter broke, y'all. Look, look, we need to pray. So Mary and Martha sent word <laughs> to Jesus. And the word that they sent to Jesus was about their brother. And they sent word to Jesus saying, you know, get here quickly, Jesus, because our brother is about to die. And the Bible says something interesting. And it says this in John chapter 11. It says that Jesus loved them. But he stayed where he was two more days. He loved him, loved them, but he stayed where he was at. Now, I don't know how you would have felt, but if, 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 if I send word to you that I need your help, you know, my brother is dying... And, and you're the one who can fix him, but you choose to hang out where you are for two more days. That would speak volumes to me about the true depth or what I thought the, of the true depth of your love was. Friends, I can tell you that God doesn't always answer our prayers the way that we think he should. God doesn't always answer our prayers the way that we think he would. He doesn't always answer our prayers the way that we want him to. And how many of you can identify with this? God doesn't always answer our prayers as quickly as we think we need him to. But the truth is, God loves you. Even when things don't go your way, he loves you. He loves me. As a matter of fact, the Lord loves everybody. But he doesn't always answer our prayers the way that we want him to. And the Bible says that, that Mary and Martha sent word and, and reached out to Jesus, but he stayed where he was at for 48 more hours. And by the time Jesus shows up, Lazarus is dead, in a tomb dead, wrapped in death cloth. He is gone. And Martha, the sister, comes out when Jesus gets there, and, and she gives Jesus a piece of her mind. She said, listen, if you, could have, if you would have been here sooner, my brother wouldn't be dead. So she's saying, Jesus, it is your fault that Lazarus has passed away. Because Jesus, if you would have came when I told you to. Why didn't you come when we sent for you? You're late. And because you're late, it's over and he's dead. My brother, my only brother is dead. Because of you. And Jesus says some powerful words back to Martha. And this is what I want us to look at today. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles. 
to John chapter 11. I hadn't said that in a long time. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles. John chapter 11, beginning in verse number 23, it says this. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. I bet she rolled her eyes at him. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again. And that's just like us church folks. We know everything. I know. How many of y'all like to hang around people that know everything? Nobody seemed to raise their hand there. Or how many of you like when you tell your children, hey, I want you, I know. The spirit of slap will come on you sometimes when that happens, right? <laughs> Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the res- at the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, catch this, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Would you pray with me, please? Father, thank you today for your word. Thank you today for your presence. I thank you today, God, for forgiveness and salvation and mercy and grace. I thank you for all of these things. And Lord, I ask you today, God, that you would help us to hear what you're saying to us, Lord. And and, and God, help us to, to not be just hearers of your word, but God, help us to be doers or appliers of your word. Help us apply this word to our lives individually, I pray in Jesus' name. And all who agree with me, would you say amen? I want us to take a look at at these seven powerful words of Jesus. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And I want you to follow along with me today and, and take good notes. This is good stuff. This is something that you can use every day. The first thought I have that I want to share with you is this. Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And this is what we're celebrating this weekend all over the world, the whole wide world, over two and a half billion people from different races, different countries, different economic statuses, all around the world are getting together to celebrate and acknowledge that Jesus was crucified and that he rose again. People everywhere are doing this. He was put in a borrowed tomb and on the third day, guess what happened? He got up. That's what happened to a lot of people this morning. They didn't want to get up. Oh, y'all help me tell them I said hello. (laughs) He got up from the dead. He died for our sins on the cross so that you and I could have a relationship with him. Jesus, by the power of God, was raised from the dead. He defeated death. He defeated hell. He defeated the grave. And Jesus is alive forevermore. And today, this is is what Easter is all about. He rose from that grave. And we believe this. We believe that when we die, we will be raised again. So that we can experience eternal life. You see, when Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection, he was pointing to the future. He was saying, In me, you have hope. You in me, you can have a future. In me, you can have an eternal destination. In 1 Peter chapter 3, I mean chapter 1, verse number 3 says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Look at your neighbor and say, and you too. Who are kept by the power of God through faith, For salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You see, this here is telling us that in him we have an inheritance of eternal life. This, friends, is the Easter story. In Jesus we have a future hope because Jesus is alive again today. 
He's alive again to show us that that one day we will be alive again in the future because Jesus is the resurrection. And because he's the resurrection, we can have hope for our future. Because Jesus is the resurrection and because we can have hope for our future, I believe that one day I'm going to see my mother again. You know, she, she passed away a few years ago. I don't remember how many years ago, but some of y'all are thinking, well, you should remember. That's your mother. I don't. I don't believe I'll see her again. I believe that one day I'll see my grandma Ruby again. My grandma Ruby was the, the first person that ever told me that I was going to be a preacher. I was a little boy, little. We didn't go to church. And she would dress my cousin Brad, he and I are about the same age, she would dress him up like a baseball player, and she would dress me up like Jimmy Swaggart. <laughs> and I remember her saying, boy, you're going to be a preacher. And I'm like, okay, what is that? What, okay. Yeah. Because of this, I believe that I will see my other grandparents and family and friends that have gone on before me. I'm looking forward to that day. I believe this because Jesus is the resurrection and Jesus is the life. I believe that because Jesus is the resurrection, I will spend eternity in heaven. I believe this. In heaven, a place where there's no more pain. Heaven, a place where there's no more sickness. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more heartache. There'll be no more murder. It is a perfect place. Heaven. I'm looking forward to that place. That place where we'll spend eternity with our Savior. Why am I looking forward to that place? Because Jesus is the resurrection. Second part of that verse says this. Jesus is the life. He says, I am the future. I am the life. Because Jesus is the life. When we get down, Jesus will get us back up. Because Jesus is alive again, you and I can be alive again. Do you get that? Not just in our tomorrows, but we can be alive in our todays. Question. How many of y'all ever watched the show Walking Dead? Don't raise your hands. Don't raise your hands. I've never watched it, but here's what I know about it. It features zombies. Hey, you got an hour to waste? Yeah. Let's watch The Walking Dead. Just like everything else. But here's what I know. I'm not getting on to you about watching zombies. I'm not. But here's what I know about zombies. This is all I really know about zombies. Zombies are really not alive, nor are they dead. Hmm. They just simply exist. And many people in this world live zombie lives. You're not dead, but you're not living life to the fullest either. You walk around every day just simply going through the motions. And friend, you're really not living. You're not. And Jesus is saying to us that he is the life. He came to give you and I life more abundantly. A life that's better than good. A life that's better than we deserve. You see, there have been times that I've been angry. So have you. There's been times that I've harbored unforgiveness. There's been times that I've harbored resentment and tried to get back at people or tried to get even with people. And you know what I figured out about this? When I was carrying around all of this stuff, I wasn't dead, but I wasn't living either. There's been many times in my life where Jesus has come and breathed life 
into me. He's gotten me back up. He's given me hope. And look what he says here to Martha in John 11 and 23. He says, Martha, your brother will rise again. And, and, and here's where we mess up. We're like, I know, 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 no, 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 I know. I know he'll rise at the resurrection. And see, there's so many times in our lives when Jesus is trying to share something with us, and we're like, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, and you really don't know what he's trying to say. Sometimes we need to listen because we got two of these and one of these. And he's telling her, Martha, your brother's going to rise again. And she's just skipping past, you know, years down the road, whatever. And he said, Martha, I'm here right now. I'm right in front of you. And honey, I just want you to understand something. That I'm here, I am the resurrection, and your brother is fixing to be raised. Oh, I know. And so often, church, because we know everything, we don't really focus on anything. We need to learn to focus on the Word of God because His promises are yes and amen. He wants you to be healthy today, not just tomorrow, but today also. He wants you to be happy today, not just tomorrow, but today also. He wants you to be filled with hope today, not just tomorrow. Remember, Lazarus was dead when he said this, and the Bible says that he stunk too. What Jesus was saying is, I can make a dead man rise again. I can make a broken heart love again. Hear me, friend. No matter how dead your situation is today, there's hope for you. You can make your situation rise again. How? How do we do this? Because he is the resurrection and he is the life. John 11 verse 43 and 44 says this. It says, now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come here, boy. Verse 44 says, and he who had died came out bound, hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. I believe that this Easter season that Jesus is calling you by name and telling you to come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of that despair you're living in. Come out of that unhealthy relationship that you're involved in. Come out of those bad habits. Come out of that addiction. Come out of that low self-esteem. Come out of the pain. Come out of the heartache. Come out of the hurt. Because he is the resurrection and life. And he's speaking to us to come out. Verse 44 says this. It says, let him go. Say it with me. Look at your neighbor and say, let it go. Look at your other neighbor, the one you really don't like, and say, let it go. Let it go. Really? Far too often we hold on to things that we ought to be Letting go of. Let go. Let go. Let go. Jesus is saying to us, let it go. Let her go. Some of y'all holding on to something you shouldn't be holding on to. Let her go. Let him go. Oh, I could preach right there. Let that addiction go. Let that pain that you're holding on to, let it go. Let that hurt go. Let that depression go. Let that guilt go. Let that shame go. Let that condemnation go. Condemnation, let go today. Because I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And Jesus said, Lazarus. Come out of there. You don't belong in there. 
And that's what I'm here today to tell you. Some of y'all, y'all refusing to let some things go. And I'm here to tell you to come out today because you don't belong where you are. Come out of that depression. Come out of that despair. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forward. Put your name right there. He's telling you to come forward. He's telling you to let it go. Jesus is alive again so that you can be alive again. Not just in your tomorrows, but in your todays also. Here's my third point. I'm moving on. Jesus is the I am. Is anybody getting cold yet? Bless the Lord. (laughs) Jesus is the I am. There's a story in the Bible about a man named Mo. Moses. Moses was in a desert taking care of his father-in-law's sheep when he seen a burning bush. Any of y'all ever been to the desert? Now, let me, let me say this. This is an audience participation church. We like the participation. Some of y'all didn't get enough coffee this morning. I see, go out there and get you about three donuts and, and eat them real quick and you'll wake up with us. But he's in the middle of the desert. And here's what I know about the desert. There's not a whole lot going on in the desert. It's kind of sparse, barren, right? And Moses is out there. He's just kind of chilling, leaning up against a rock, one of them reclining rocks. When he sees something begin to flicker off in the distance, and it catches his attention. So he goes over to this bush, and it's burning, but it's not being consumed. He's looking at that thing, and he's looking at that thing, and he he probably walks around it. You know, it'd make me nervous too. Would it you? If you're out there all by yourself with just some sheep, and you see this bush, and it's burning, but it ain't burning up. He's walking around it, I'm sure, and he's looking at it like, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, out of this burning bush, he hears, Moses. And he didn't have to question who that was. He knew who that was. And he said, Mo, I want you to go back. Go back to your hometown, son. I know you're a wanted man there, but you go on to go back because I'm going to be with you. And I'm, like, I, I'm like, you know, if I was Moses, I'd be like, Woo, what? Lord, you got the wrong cat. I ain't going back. They ain't found me yet. I'm not going back. But he says this, he, he says to him, he says, uh, to go back to Egypt and lead his people out of bondage and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And look how Moses responds to God. This is so cool. I don't know how you would respond to God, but this is how Moses did. He said, then Moses said to God, indeed, that probably wouldn't have been the first word I said. Mine would have been like, What? <laughs> <laughs> it says, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, well, what's his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And Moses is kind of like, hey, God, can you please be a little bit more specific? You're not giving me much to work with here. And God was telling Moses, don't limit me, son. Don't box me in. I'm bigger than, than you can fathom. And, and, and I understand more than you think that I can understand. And you know what my name is. My name is I am. And you tell them, I am has sent me to you. And when Mr. Pharaoh asks you who sent you, you tell him, I am sent you. You see, I'm here today to tell you that for every cry, there is an answer. I am is the answer. I need help. I am. I need hope. I am. I need a new start. I am. Nobody ever listens to me. 
I am. I don't have a prayer. I am. I, I don't have a friend. I am. My kids deserve more than I can give them. I am. God, I'm pouring into others. Who's pouring into me? I am. I've given all that I can and it's still not enough. I am. I tried. I quit. I can't. I need a drink. I need a fix. I need a lover. Somebody just hold me. I am. I am the solution. I am the restorer. I am the builder. I am the answer. I am the wise one. I am the mighty one. I am the healer. I am the lover of your soul. I am still the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. And I am the soon coming king. I am that I am. I am the good shepherd. I am the powerful one. I am the lifter of your head. I am for you and not against you. I am available to you. I am that I am. And and God is saying to us today that he's still all that you and I ever need. The I am. The I am. The I am. The I am. And I'm going to put the mules in the barn. I had a lady tell me last week the mules are still out. I didn't say it. But I'm going to close today with a question. A question that I read to you in the beginning. John chapter 11, verse 26, said this, And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. But here's the question. Do you believe this? That's the question I want to close with. Do you believe this? This was the same question that Jesus asked Martha. And this really is the Easter question. Martha said, that she believed. And this is a question that I have for all of us today. Do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus died and rose again for you? Do you believe that he is who he says he is? Do you believe that he loves you? Do you believe that he can forgive you of your sins? Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? You see, friends, here's what I know. It's not enough having parents, grandparents, friends who believe. You must believe. When you believe this, you know what happens? When you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you come alive again. Because he'll call you out of that grave. And I know this from personal experience. I, uh, I grew up in a large metropolitan area not far from here called Magnolia, Texas. And Magnolia, <laughs> we had a stop sign. We didn't have no lights. Right? Had railroad track, had boogie burger. Some of y'all ain't never even heard of boogie burger. Yeah. But I remember the day that I became alive again. I was young. And I remember when I gave my life to the Lord, it wasn't long after that that I began to preach. It was probably a little too soon. I probably shouldn't have done it so soon, but I did. And I wish that that was all of my story, that that's all I've ever done, but it's not. You see, I fell away. I quit serving the Lord. I started doing the things that I wanted to do. And as a result, I got involved in some things that I'm not proud of. And I wasn't living. I was just existing. 
I never could forget that happiness that I felt when I was serving the Lord wholeheartedly. The problem that I had was I believed it. But I allowed other things to come between me and the Lord Jesus. My question to you today is, what is it that's standing between you and your Savior? What's so important that you would miss heaven over? Because the word of God says this, that thou shalt have no other gods before me. He's got to be first. He's got to be first. He'll be second to nothing or no one. Friends, do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection? Do you believe that he loves you? Do you believe that He wants to give you eternal life. Do you believe that he wants to set you free? Do you believe that he's your healer today? Do you believe that he's the lover of your soul? Do you? I sure hope so. Let's pray. Lord, we love you today. Thank you so much for your love for us. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God, for Calvary. I thank you for the empty grave. I thank you for the resurrection. I thank you for this, the greatest gifts known unto mankind. Friend, while you have your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to ask you some questions. Please just be honest with yourself. My first question is this How is your relationship with the Lord Jesus? Would you say, Pastor, I need to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus? I need to make things right with him. I need to ask him to come into my heart and come into my life and forgive me for my sins. Is that you, friend? I want to see your hand. I want to pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can put them right back down. Thank you. Or maybe this is you. And you were like me at one time. You were serving the Lord, but you drifted away. You drifted away from serving him and today you feel like you need a do-over a new a new beginning a new starting point is that you friend i want to see your hands i want to pray for you also there's hands all over the building thank you thank all of you thank you thank you thank you and maybe this is you say, Pastor, I believe in the resurrection. I just sometimes don't feel resurrected. I don't feel joy. I don't feel peace. Pray for me. Is that you? There's hands everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to pray this morning. I want all of you to say this prayer with me, please. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, I realize that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And Lord, today I'm asking you to come into my heart, come into my life. Forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. And Lord, help me to serve you with all of my future. Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, you've seen the hands and you know the hearts, God, that were lifted up before you today. And I thank you for the honesty here. Lord, there were those that raised their hands because they've been 
not feeling the joy and the peace, God, that comes with you. And Lord, I ask you today, Father, that you would draw us closer to you. Lord, give us a desire and a hunger to read your word again. Give us a desire to pray to you daily again. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to put someone in their path, God, that could tell them about your goodness and your mercies and be an encourager to them every single day. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, in the marvelous name of Jesus, in the miraculous name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, there were several of you that, that uh, you, you made things right with the Lord Jesus today. And there's a card in the seat back that's in front of you. It says this. It says, I have decided... Would you fill that card out, please, and turn it in today? The reason that we're asking you to do this is because the Word of God tells us to go and make disciples, and we can't help you. We can't disciple you unless you let us know who you are. And then let me say this to you. If you don't have a home church, would you please give this church one year of your life, just one year, and sit under the Word and let the Word of God change you rest of your life. It works. It works. I promise you it works. And who's coming to close? Come on up here. And let me say this while, while Brother John is coming up here. I want you to know something. You ever heard saying the darkest hour is just before dawn? You know where that comes from? In the Word. Just when you think you can't take anymore, just remember, he's right there waiting on you to take that step towards him. Friends, your best days are ahead of you. And I know this to be true because I've read the back of the book. And in the end, the believer wins. God bless you and have a wonderful day.